Since I'm going to be releasing music again, I wanted to create a tool like this to help with that. Uh, you can use it for a variety of things, I guess, but its main priority is for splitting up a waveform into different songs. Uh, this will only really be useful if, like me, you create the whole record at once, making one song seamlessly transition into the next, and so what you want to happen is for the first song to cleanly end without any noticeable clicks, and then the next song to start without any noticeable clicks as well. The best place to separate the songs is where there's as little activity as possible. That is, in stereo, on the left and right channels, you want the point that the previous song ends and the next one starts to be as close to silence as possible. That is, a zero point in stereo, you may also know this as the zero crossing, or the DC line. Uh, the Renoise Waveform Editor kind of has a tool which will help you with this. It's the snap option in the zero crossing mode, but it only prioritizes the left channel. So it can kind of lead you astray. This tool, however, will prioritize both the left and right channels and it'll do something else. It'll look for what's happening both before and after the marker. So you can be confident that the previous track will be at the lowest point on the waveform as well as the next track starting on the lowest point of the waveform. So how does it work? Well, as you can see, it's incredibly simple. There's only three options. What you do is on the waveform, you make a selection, the range in which you would like to search for the best part for a marker to be placed on. Then hit place marker and it will find the best point where there is low volume both before and after that marker. If you already have a marker in place, then make a selection around it and hit move marker. And again, it will find the best place and then move the existing marker to that. Renoise has a built-in ability to destructively render slices. And so when you've sliced up the waveform, uh, you can use this option and then it will automatically create uh, individual songs. And they're then ready for exporting and you can put them onto Bandcamp or Spotify or your distribution for iTunes or whatever. However, you may want to put things onto CD and that has to be done at disk at once mode, which requires an entire waveform with uh, markers on it. So that feeds into the CD index option. This will only work with 44.1 uh, kilohertz waveforms, since that's what's required for CDs. And this will ensure that when you place or move the marker with this tool, it will only be placed at intervals of 588 samples. That is because CDs use a rather weird abstract method of dividing up seconds. It's in 75 frames. Now, CD indexing is when you place on the waveform where you would like each track to start and stop. This can only be done on CD frames, i.e. 75 times per second. So, when you use this tool in that way, then you can be confident that it's going to be on exactly the right place for burning a CD. And that is something that some professionals didn't even know in the past, because I know I have some professionally mastered CDs in my collection, and if you look at the waveforms here, and hear them playing, Even though these places charge an absolute fortune for their mastering services, this is extremely embarrassing. This is failing at the absolute basics here. So, this tool will ensure that that never happens for you. And doing this within Renoise ensures it's a seamless process, because when you save out a sample, it's done as a WAV, 
which allows markers to be placed on it as well. So when you import this into your CD burning software, the markers you placed on Renoise with this tool are going to be there as well. And you can then burn the CD knowing that each track will start and stop precisely where you wanted them to.